Welcome all to Pharmacology Further E Newsletter, and this is the issue of February 24. Now, coming over to the first section, that is, is pharmacology difficult? We have the February FDA approved drugs. The first one is Burisonide Oral Suspension, and the brand name is Eohylia. It was approved on February 9, 2024, for the treatment of eosinophilic esophagitis it's a mucoadherent formulation the next one is the iloprost injection the brand name is or lumen it was approved on february 13th 2024 for the treatment of frost bite what is the mechanism of action it's a prostacycline mimetic used to treat frost bite and reduce the incidence of amputation of the digits the next drug on our list is Liffy Lucel Intravenous Infusion Suspension and the brand name is Mtegui. This was approved on February 16, 2024 for the treatment of the adults suffering from metastatic melanoma. It's a tumor-derived autologous T-cell immunotherapy. The next drug on our list is Cefepime and N metazobactam injection. The brand name is X Bleefep. It was approved on February 22, 2024, for the treatment of urinary tract infections, especially the complicated infections. Now, cefepime is a fourth generation cephalosporine and it is combined with N metazobactam, that is, a beta lactamase inhibitor. The next drug on our list is Adalimumab RYVK injection. The brand name is Simlandi. It was approved on February 23, 24 for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ulcerative colitis, uveitis, Crohn's disease, ankylosing spondylitis, etc. What can you guess the mechanism of action? Well. The mechanism of action of this drug is by blocking the tumor necrosis factor TNF biosimilar to Humira. The next drug and the last drug on the list is Letty Botulinum Toxin WLBG powder for injection and the brand name is Letibo. It was approved on February 29, 24 for the treatment of glabular lines. The mechanism of action of the drug is by inhibiting the release of acetylcholine. It also acts as a neuromuscular blocker. That's all about the February FDA approved drugs. Coming over to our next section in Is Pharmacology Difficult? We have the latest medical updates. Well, first and foremost, it has been researched that regular and distracting musculoskeletal pain has been the leading cause of quitting and retiring from the work much before than the expected age. The next one, studies from German Institute, they have demonstrated in a mouse model that metformin has always been frequently prescribed during pregnancy with a view of gestational diabetes in mind. And luckily it has no harmful effect on the offspring as it can cross the placental barrier. Next, it has been found with great research that if the lungs are severely infected during COVID infection, the danger can spread to the heart too. Next, scientists of John Hopkins University have suggested that artificial intelligence can now detect infected lung tissues owing to severe COVID-19 infections. Next, novel researchers from University of Sheffield have warned against the health risks developed by consuming drinking water containing much more arsenic than the recommended levels. That's all in the latest medical updates. Coming over to our next section in Is Pharmacology Difficult? And that is from my classroom. Here I will be sharing some insights of pharmacology learnings from the classes that I have taken this month or all the study material that I have read in this particular subject of mine. Well, this time, my own reading topic, it comprised of migraine and its treatment. 
First and foremost, let's know about migraine. Migraine is a unilateral pulsatile throbbing headache. The outcomes are usually tiredness, nausea, vision disturbances, etc. All these adversely affect the social and the personal life very much. Well, we can classify migraine with aura and migraine without aura, two major classifications. Accordingly, there are different stages of migraine, prodrome, aura and headache. Now, genetics play a great role in migraine etiology. Other causes are hormonal changes, stress, too much of coffee or tobacco, overexertion, loud noise, lights, etc. The treatment for the mild conditions initially involves the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, that is NSAIDs. Examples are ibuprofen, aspirin, acetaminophen, etc. But if the pain and the problem is moderate to severe, addition of the drugs like triptans is done. And the most common being the sumatriptan, zolmitriptan, rizatriptan, etc. Other group of drugs is the ditans, which can interfere with the release of CGRP. One of the examples is lesmiditan. There are another one's group of drugs are G-pans, GE. They also suppress the CGRP and the examples are Rimejipant, Ubrogipant, etc. Ergotamines and dihydroergotamines and diuretic drugs like metoclopramide are also added upon and are quite useful. The profile axis of migraine is also a very important topic of study. Special and many drugs are used for this purpose. Drugs used are anti-convulsants like valproic acid and topiramate. Beta blockers like propranol, calcium channel blockers like verapamil, and flunorazine. Then we have tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline, nortriptyline. Then we have serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors like venlafaxine, duloxetine. Then we also have monoclonal antibodies like erinumab and galcinezumab. Then there are home tips and remedies to calm and soothe down during migraine. They are to sit and relax in quiet and dark room, apply cold or warm compressors, massage the scalp and press the temples, rotating them in the circular motion. That's with this we complete the is pharmacology difficult section. Coming over to our next section, the Rajan Wills. So, this time from Rajan Wills writing desk, I bring to you some of the important updates. Like recently I had planned to write a book, Demeter's Diary, but now I have dropped down that project. A new project has come to my mind. Firstly, I've been busy collecting and researching material for the drug presser series and I was quite able to do so. Secondly, my visit to Bangalore brought new stuff, insights and materials for the book to write afresh. So I plan to write my second travel memoir, Bangalore and Bingo. This is gonna be the most probably my April Camp NaNoWriMo project thing. With this we finish the, another section coming over to Simple and smart, Sparkling. We are gonna talk about mushrooms today and for your kind information, mushrooms are vegetarian. Oh yes, mushrooms are veg food. Both toxic and non-toxic varieties of mushrooms are found but edible non-toxic variants they are quite healthy and rich in minerals and vitamins. The mushrooms, they are rich in antioxidants, especially selenium. They are also rich in beta glucan, which is a soluble dietary fiber which works by reducing excess bad cholesterol and being beneficial for health heart. It can also aid to regulate blood sugar and prove to be useful in diabetes type 2. Mushrooms, they are rich source of copper, thiamine, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. Mushrooms help by boosting immune system, lowering down the blood pressure. Cremini and button mushrooms, they are most common edible varieties. Oyster, enoki, and moral, they are also edible variants. They protect the brain, help fight the carcinogens, and they are a good source of vitamin D. Well, while mushrooms, they grow in nature, they should not be consumed as they are poisonous. Mushroom poisoning can occur in few hours of eating them. The sign and symptoms, they are confusion, nausea, sweating, excitability, dilated pupils, difficulty in breathing and diarrhea. 
The variety Amanita muscaria, Amanita phalloides, they are fatal if eaten. Delayed mushroom poisoning, it can be treated with atropine to reduce excess cholinergic symptoms. An early treatment includes activated charcoal so and a lot of supportive care. With this, we finish another section coming over to off the cuff talks. In off the cuff talks today, we are going to talk about the benefits of reading newspaper. Newspaper reading updates general knowledge. You can read any language newspaper of your choice and you can enrich your vocabulary and knowledge. Comprehension and reading skills enhance and improve. A good reader can always become a good writer. With latest news and advertisements, you can always stay ahead in your career. Actually, you become an active leader, enhance public skills, public speaking skills. Biographies and examples of people's lives teaches lessons and motivates you to stay intact onto the path of dutifulness, loyalty, follow the moral values in life and become a good responsible citizen. Reading a newspaper daily cultivates a global opinion, overview and perspective. Children can progress in their language subjects and subjects like science and social science if they daily read the newspaper and stay in touch with the latest updates and the researches. All in all, newspaper reading, rather any kind of reading, especially a great learning activity and a habit. Adopted by anybody who wishes to stay disciplined, informed, updated and progressive. That is all from my end for the month of February 24. Hope you all maintain your reading curiosity, skills and habit. Enjoy this piece of writing for the month from my end. Soon we will be having a March issue because everything got a little delayed because of my trip to Bangalore. But then it's well and fine. Better to be late than never. With this wonderful thought and quotation, I put a pause to my speech and my words here. See you and talk to you about pharmacology further e-newsletter in the next month's issue. Till then, thank you, take care, bye-bye.